of Talent Series Season 4, where we invite the most prominent HR leadership voices to share their insights and experiences on and around the current HR ecosystem. Joining us today is Mr. Heyman Banerjee. A quick introduction about Heyman before we start. Hemant is an HR leader with over 23 years of experience in the IT industry and has a strong business background. Prior to moving to HR, Hemant led functions across core delivery, pre-sales, account management, strategy and planning, and business operations. Currently, Hemant leads the global HR operations and talent acquisition for global delivery network at DXC Technology. With this, a very warm welcome, Hemant. It is indeed a delight to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Manan. Uh, good afternoon and uh, pleasure being here, right? And talking to you guys. Uh, you know, um, I always appreciate these kind of talks because uh, uh, it just gives me a good perspective in terms of uh, what you are also hearing from market. And it, it is a good dialogue, in fact. Um, and uh, it's very enriching, uh, to be honest. So I'm sure we are all looking forward to a very interesting discussion. So without further ado, let me just set the context for our conversation with my first question. So how exactly is your industry tackling the changes that the workplace has gone through over the past couple of years? If you could just share a brief overview with us. Yeah, I think uh, the industry has seen a lot uh, since 2020, 2021. Um, I think uh, I don't I don't know whether I can say pandemic is behind us. I still hear keep on hearing uh, some news and some new um, versions of COVID coming up, some new variants. Um, so so I can't say that, but uh, that was one period that we saw wherein you know uh, suddenly the business had to change gears. Not a lot of companies were ready to remote work. They didn't have the facilities. They didn't have the means to enable their employees to be productive uh, working from home. Uh, and I think it, in general, the industry caught up very well and did, did well. Uh, it was a journey which taught us a lot. Uh, then we saw, uh, as things were coming back, we saw um, a cycle of, you know, a uh, lot of opportunities in the market, people changing jobs, a lot of attrition in the industry. Uh, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking specifically about IT and ITES, uh, and that attrition led to a lot of frenzied hiring. Then we see uh, another cycle of uh, course correction by a lot of companies, and including you know the large tech firms as well. Uh, and now we are in somewhat uh, stabilization phase. Okay, uh, I think companies uh, are realizing that the basic yeah. remains same. Right. Uh, the only thing constant in this period is the basic principle of taking care of the people. OK, so that is a significant learning. So I think whatever happens in the market or external forces where we don't have control, um, you know, the only thing that we have to constantly keep on thinking is how do we take care of our people and the people uh, you know, aspirations and uh, what they want from their employers and organizations also keep also evolves as as uh, you know the environment evolves and the external forces uh, change, right? So, uh, you know, uh, be it uh, you know uh, organizations giving flexibility to work remotely. I think a lot of companies are now asking for people to come back. I think uh, there's a mixed reaction in the workforce. So giving flexibility, taking care of their, um, you know, well-being holistically, right? Financial, social, emotional, and physical, that becomes suddenly important. Taking care of their uh, careers uh, suddenly is again, again important. Um, their uh, employees, uh, opportunities to learn new things, right? Now, because we are seeing a lot of uh, talk about AI, so certainly, uh, that's the talk of the town. Um, organizations are making good investments in AI. A lot, of, a lot of organizations are now saying that each and every employee should have some knowledge of AI um, and how it impacts their fields. And let's be ready. Uh, let's be a workforce 
uh, who is not left behind, who will know how to use AI in their specific field. So I think um, that's what is changing. I think this industry has survived different uh, phases, right? Uh, be it uh, the 9-11, uh, you know, be it the 2008-2009 crash, or be it the uh, you know pandemic. I think this this industry has survived, and every time it teaches us a lesson. Um, and as an HR, uh, I can say that the people first approach is the most important thing, right? Because hey, I mean, all the companies know that um, people are in assets no matter whatever happens. No matter how many, uh, how much automation you do, no, ma no matter if you bring in AI and all of all those sort of things, uh, people remain at the core of operations, right? So, uh, so there are changes that we see. There are technical advances. There are external factors, uh, social economic factors. But the only thing that is not changing is the people approach, right? Holistically, I think there are strategies that keep on evolving uh, based on the requirement and the need that we see, uh, but the philosophy remains the same. So that's what I think um, uh, we are seeing in the industry at this point in time. And um, in DXC as well, we are, I think, uh, managing this change pretty well. Um, you know, at least I can speak for India. Um, we, have to, we have been doing a lot of... Uh, uh, programs around our people, uh, which I'm happy to talk about as we as we progress. That was very insightful, uh, Hemant. And I saw you talked about people first. And I think embedding soft skills into your leadership is very critical to you know cultivating a people first culture at the workplace. Yeah. So, uh, how do you exactly see the importance of soft skills evolving in the future? See, soft skills, uh, so they have always been important, okay? Um, but what we were expecting earlier in past, okay, uh, those parameters are changing very quickly, okay? So if you see, um, you know, earlier employees and, uh, and when we hire the candidates, we will look at critical skills like problem solving, analytical skills, uh, we will look at... Uh, uh, emotional quotients, we look at their ability to innovate, be creative. We'll also look at uh, holistically their communication skills, which largely were, you know, written and verbal communication skills, right? Now, with changing times, this is evolving further. For example, communication is no longer verbal and, uh, and um, writing just. It's more than that. I think... Uh, never before companies are emphasizing on how to communicate virtually because a uh, lot of conversations are happening virtually over um, zoom webex teams right how to articulate okay um, at the same time how to how to listen better okay uh, on the other hand uh, soft skill like how do you network more how do you work better in teams while you are working you know in a virtual first environment that is becoming suddenly important um, there are as you go up uh, managing stakeholders becoming more and more important right so soft aspects of your uh, ab ability to work with different kind of people you know um, you know not that i am a big fan of hierarchical uh, uh, you know org structures but that's a reality in many many firms. So working across the layers of the organization, uh, managing conflicts, right, uh, becoming very very important. Uh, so I think holistically speaking, uh, the tenets and parameters are evolving fast, um, and it is ever. I mean, it is now even more important for uh, companies to keep on investing in building those uh, these uh, skills. Um, in my honest opinion. Uh, you can do whatever is needed uh, from a learning perspective, from a training, um, a workshops, etc. But majority of this happens through day-to-day -day work. So active coaching and mentoring by leader is very, very important. For example, uh, leadership is one of the one of the uh, soft skills that is very sought after. 
leadership at all level and leadership is not only about managing a team of 20 50 100 it's about everybody taking leadership in their role so that they can create that outcome and get that impact right now as you progress in your leadership journey there could be many situations which you have not encountered or you have not learned um, you know in any training session right and uh, so situational leadership comes with experience with comes with you know your mentor your coach um, imparting that um, coaching to you and widening it in, into your subconscious how you handle it right so i think uh, as i said it's it's changing it's evolving it's not any more the uh, basic things um, and that's true for all the levels not just uh, people who who reach a level in their career but i think even people coming out of uh, fresh out of college uh, we're just not looking at their ability to let's say uh, think uh, logically or their analytical skills or their problem solving we're looking for more so uh, so that's what i i think um, is changing from a soft skill perspective that was indeed very insightful and engaging, Hemant. So, you know, without breaking the flow of our conversation, I'll quickly move on to my next question. Mm -hmm. Can you shed some light on your employer brand branding strategy and how it has evolved over the past few years? Yeah, so employer, employer branding, I think, uh, um, in fact, we have completely redone it in the last two, three, two, three years because uh, what we realized is that uh, you know, there has to be something for everybody. Okay, so employee, so employee uh, value proposition is not just for a segment of people. It's just not for only the employees, right? It is for uh, the talent that is interested in DXC from opportunity perspective, and uh, you know, uh, and the job seekers. So uh, there is also a variability around how the generational shift is happening, right? So, you know, the Gen Zs to the baby boomers. I mean, exclude the baby boomers, the Gen, the Gen X at least, and the millennials, right? So we have to keep that in mind. So uh, our employee value proposition, I think, uh, is now beyond just um, pay per market or competitive pay, right? It's holistically across uh, benefits beyond just the pay uh, it's across uh, talent programs uh, you know it could be learning and development record uh, rewards and recognition um, career progressions uh, obviously work life balance is a big theme uh, with dxc being one of the very few companies who are still continue to to work fully remotely uh, i think very very large uh, number of people in dxc continue to work remotely i think um, you know i have come to work for this discussion maybe after a month right um, and that's a big big pull factor for us right uh, then you know obviously the engagement around as i said uh, employee well being uh, their their experience um, from an employee perspective from a supervisor perspective is important uh, in, from an engagement perspective we do a lot of csr uh, and obviously the brand in India. So, so, so that's what we have been doing. We cater to all the segments of the the talent. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if we see a good number of uh, Gen Z want flexibility, right? So there the remote works come in. Right? The Gen X wants, you know. Uh, you know the work-life balance as well as opportunity to learn and grow right so there we have uh, as i said uh, career progression framework uh, wherein we we not only look at them progressing ahead in their career not from just from a promotion perspective but new opportunity right for example um, we have a uh, we have a strong focus on internal talent so before i go and hire in the market um, I ensure that there is nobody available in that talent segment within the within the company, within the location that cannot fill that role, right? Um, so that's a big thing um, for me. Then 
you know building their skills through lnd programs now lnd programs as i said you know soft skills uh, developing soft skills and developing uh, you know hard skills anyway they need to do because that's part of their job um so again focusing on each and every segment so starting from freshers we have a program called bloom wherein um they train on a lot of software aspects of the business right they learn what the business is about how to work uh you know uh, the the campus to corporate kind of thing right uh, mid level uh, we have programs like ignite wherein uh, they learn about how to manage people how to work in ambiguous environment you know how to navigate through uh, you know uh, complex situations and how to you know lead teams as we go for senior leaders we have programs like like unleash right where we have partnered with uh, isb and um it's the theme is lot of around solving for dxc through innovation right so for each of these segments you know we have different programs we have a lot of focus around building uh, diverse talent right so for our women leads we have program named uh, she leads wherein um, these female leaders come and then they do some you know workshops and then they uh, drive then they identify projects which could be beneficial for dxc uh and then they drive these projects in collaboration with the mentor and coach right and that's how uh, you know they develop their leadership skills so so all of this uh, uh creates a strong package um you know just to mention on the benefits i think uh, one of the thing that i want to highlight is uh, uh we saw a lot of uh, our colleagues suffered in in the uh, pandemic okay um and uh, while you know our benefit like uh, the uh, medical insurance uh, was pretty good at that point in time we had made it better right so um, now we cover our employees up to 10 lakhs okay and they can extend it up to 20 lakhs with with a premium okay i think no other company offers it in in the it space today okay um So, so these are some of the things i think uh, the focus has been how do we how do we uh, not do one thing which fits everybody but have have a something for each and every one in the organization uh, could it it could be uh, the diversity population it could be different segments of employees from gen z to uh, to millennials as well so or and and the baby boomers as well so so that's been the philosophy in approach to be honest thank you himat so you uh, touched upon employee engagement via lnd so mm-hmm. i'll quickly steer our conversation into that direction mm-hmm. what are your employee engagement strategies especially when we talk about today's remote and hybrid work setup yeah so i think um, uh, i think first thing is we have empowered our our leaders right to fully engage with the employees uh on a day to day basis right and hr is mo- hr enables them right for example um uh, you know if, if you see in the virtual environment uh, pe- when people are not physically next to each other uh having a structured program is very very important right so for example uh, having those uh you know team meetings at the at the basic level um you know the town hall the leadership addresses have been institutionalized right um they, then uh, there are various touch points that hr today runs with with employees with or without the managers right um we have uh, our flagship annual event which is called utsav right which was during the pandemic which was run online right uh, and this year we have started doing for, for some of the locations offline event right wherein um there are different kind of programs where employees come and showcase their talent they get together uh, it's like a festival of sorts right uh, within dxc um, and uh, you know these are the few things that that, that we typically do uh, you know uh, engagement is not just maybe uh, a target or a goal for us it's a way of life right so uh, at each and every level right the managers their appliances are empowered to engage the employees um to, by doing some basic things and obviously 
um, from an organization perspective, we do things like, as I said, leadership addresses and and um, much more in terms of uh, town halls and and the festivals that that we typically do. The other thing that uh, we are very pretty big on is uh, our CSR program, where we engage a large number of volunteers. Uh, just to share statistics, we have touched about hundred thousand lives till now. Right? Um, any any given point in time, we keep on running fifteen to twenty programs. Right? We have partnered with a good number of NGOs. So, um, with this, with this generation, at least I see that you know they are uh, much more conscious and thoughtful about the ESG needs of the world. Um, definitely more than what my generation would have been. Right. So that's a big, uh, big engagement for them. Right. So through our CSR programs and and projects, we we do a lot of engagement with them. So. So that's pretty much, uh, you know, broadly what what we are doing right now. That was very neatly described, and I'm sure our audiences will resonate with your thoughts. Thank you for sharing such wonderful insights, Heman. It was an absolute delight to listen to your thoughts and experiences. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Menon, and uh, glad to be here and talking to you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back soon with another engaging episode of the Weetup Talent Series. Till then, keep watching and keep talking.